This is my instant camera. It doesn't print photos. It draws them. I built it because I've never seen a portable pen plotter, let alone one combined with a camera. But the real question was, can I make actual art using cheap SG90 servos? It sounded impossible, which is exactly why I wanted to build it. Let's start with a photo. My goal is to turn it into a clean line sketch that a pen plotter could actually draw. To get there, I first tried to use a website to do the conversion. And this came out when I asked for line art, which is definitely special, but not what I had in mind. Then I prompted ChatGPT. After loading for three minutes I got this result. This looks great, though not perfect given that it's still drawing stuff that's non-essential. It also took too long to generate and actually I prefer something without the cloud. I found this website with local solutions that you can just run on your own computer. I really like this one which turns an image into a bunch of squiggly lines somehow. Or this one, it turns an image into a bunch of straight lines and if you draw enough you get an image again. I want something that looks more like it's an actual sketch though. I couldn't find it anywhere online so I guess we're building our own. I found OpenCV, a free image processing library, and using this algorithm called Kenny Edge Detection looked very promising. This is already a very good start, but now the fun begins because we can really improve this performance by a whole lot. Believe it or not, but lowering the input resolution actually makes for a better edge detection. And as you'll see later in this video, this is the first of many sweet spot optimizations that we'll do. Now I need a series of samples that I can test my processing on, so I go around the house taking pictures of cool stuff. Okay, let's try processing on these pictures. I've loaded everything up in one big grid. Then I use a bilateral filter. It smooths colors while keeping edges sharp. Next, I convert it to grayscale because edges only need brightness. And now we're getting to the fun part, the Kenny edge detection. It looked for sudden changes in brightness and those are the edges. There's two threshold values and those control how sensitive it is. Lower values find more edges, higher values make it cleaner but risk losing details. I added some sliders to find the optimal settings. And this looks like a clean five step process, but honestly, it took me forever to get here. I tried so many filters, edge detectors and random IDs that went nowhere, but what did work was OpenCV's contour detection. With this, you can edit every line segment individually. We kick out some of the small speckles, remove lines that are on the outside of the picture, and set the minimum for what is the smallest allowable line size. And finally, I did some experiments with making the lines more straight, and that gives a really distinct and cool art style, but in the end, I decided not to use it. So as I'm reaching this point, I'm confident enough to try this on actual hardware. But what hardware? I took inspiration from existing projects, these designs with two serial links are simple, but they're not that stiff, so I went for this design. This guy actually built what we're trying to do, but then in a stationary setup. You sit in front of the green screen, the camera takes a picture and it draws your portrait. And then there's this one from AliExpress. I almost bought it, but then decided I want to be able to tweak the design. So I used it as a starting point for my own design. I designed this model in CAD and now we can 3D print it and see if it works. To control the robot, I'm using a Raspberry Pi with a servo control board. Well, this is clearly, clearly... Uh, well, this looks like shit. Yeah, I've written a test program that just draws a box. Okay, well, that sucked. Now it's time to inspect why this didn't work. <laughs> and from the computer simulation, it's easy to see what happened. We need to prevent these super tight angles for this joint. Turns out we lose a lot of range where the pen can go if we do this. But more about that later. I have considered my sins and it's time to try again. Okay, well, that resembles a square. It's just really fucking fast somehow. And after slowing things down, it's time to test with the picture of my cat. Ooh, it is drawing. Holy fucking shit, I can see that this is the cat. Wow, I didn't expect that. That's cool. I secured the pen with some super glue and now it's time for the next part. I bought this camera of AliExpress and I want to see if it actually can work for our project. I adjusted my code to use the camera and to actually print the result. Let's see what the computer tried. Oh, okay, I see. Ah, yeah. Okay, so this is what it tried to sketch. Then I tried again with a different picture. Well, that, that's exactly me. This is perfect. I can sell this for millions now. 
great invention. But even though I was sarcastic at first, I kept improving, as you can see in these pictures. It I started experimenting with slowing things down and interpolating the servos. Turns out slower isn't that much better. There's again a sweet spot to find. I tried drawing a logo and just kept tuning the motion system and the image processing. Another test. Ooh, it's something. <laughs> So how do we even go from an image to where the pen tip should go? The output of our image processing looks like this right now. I found a tool which converts this into a smooth pad called PO Trace, And the results are amazing. Look at this. For the first part of the project, I kept working with this result. However, there's an issue with it. These aren't lines, they are surfaces. And we just have a pen with a fixed line width. And then I remembered, in OpenCV, we actually already have the segment data from our images. Remember, we use this to filter stuff that we don't want. So it turns out with just a few lines of code, you can turn these segments into an SVG. But at this point in the project, I didn't know that. So I converted the SVG to G code and then parsed that back to set points. So now we know where every line should be drawn. But now the robot's like, cool. Where do I move my arms? To figure that out, I had to dive into something called inverse kinematics. It sounds scary, but it's really just drawing triangles and using trigonometry to find one missing angle. This little sketch took hours of math, but the idea is simple. If you know where the pen needs to go, you can work backwards to find how much each motor has to rotate. There's actually a lot more going on here. Pen tip, offset correction, forward kinematics, feasibility checks. I'll spare you the pain, but let's just say it took a while. Oh, and it might seem like this stuff is easy for me, but I spent days learning how this actually works. I went deep into robot math, and honestly, ChatGPT helped me with most of the equations and code. It took a lot of trial and error to make it all click. But we now arrive at a very fun point. I built a simulator for this robot. Using the inverse kinematics I just showed you, we can configure all the robot parameters in this program and actually see which spaces it can reach. The points where the pen can go are marked in green. And now we can also preview our whole path. I connected the power bank and now the whole system is portable. So I'm really happy with this result. I mean, this, this really looks like it. The next thing that I want to do is mount all of this in a portable setup. It would be awesome to make a custom PCB for this camera. And I'd recommend PCB Way for that. If you go to their website and click PCB Instant Quote, you can specify exactly what you need. And it will give you an instant price quote. If you then upload your design, you will have your PCBs in no time. Thanks for sponsoring this video, PCB Way. I experimented with showing a preview of the sketch on a little screen, but in the end I decided I don't want any screens on this thing. I made a test pattern to compare performances of different versions of the machine. I compared a bunch of servos. It seemed like all authentic SG9X performed well and the knockoffs didn't, but later found something that made all those tests kind of invalid. So I bought these small pens. These are actually meant for a cutting machine, but we're gonna see if it works for our little robot. They say, give a man a tool of creation and he shall create penises. Truer words have never been spoken. Oh. Turns out this is a very poor tool of creation. Though after a bit of use it got better, but never perfect. When I looked at the image processing, I noticed that photos taken with the new camera were processed worse. I need to take a new set of test pictures and tune the algorithm to the new camera. So I've spent hours upon hours to build the image processing, but I think I've cracked it. The algorithm now uses a feedback loop, adjusting the edge sensitivity until it detects a set number of line segments. That keeps the sketch detail consistent between images. But now I noticed rectangles were coming out curved. Turns out I was blending the servo angles, not the actual XY positions. Interpolating in XY space fixed this completely. I'm really excited because I fixed the issues. Yesterday we had this really, really shitty picture of my cat and today it's drawn as it's supposed to be. I also found that too much pen pressure draws tiny marks every time the pen lifts or lands. Letting the pen barely touch the paper makes the drawing look so much cleaner. But there was still one thing I hadn't fixed. The image processing always gives me two lines for every edge. I spent a whole day building an algorithm to merge them and then realized it actually looks better with double lines. But at least now we know, so we can move on. I swapped out the big Raspberry Pi for a smaller one, the Raspberry Pi Zero, and I came up with a design for a pen clamp so I could try different types of pens. I had to curve one of the arms to make sure we don't hit ourselves. I had used the computer to calculate the perfect workspace and arm lengths for this new version. So this should work perfectly, right? 
Oh, it's bad. Oh, it's really bad. How is it this bad? So how did this happen? We used very good computer tools to design this. With these servo positions sort of locked, look at what this pen can do. Okay, yeah, this is really bad. We cannot control the pen in this position because the arms don't move in this part. What we have here is robot singularity. You really don't want this when you design a robot. This is a great moment, not because I just wasted an entire day of progress. No, it's a great moment because you can design something and be very confident in simulations that it will work. And you miss one thing and you get this shit result and it, this will never, never work. Great, great teachable moment. Obviously, the only logical next step was to make the simulator even more advanced. It now shows a sensitivity map. It took a bunch of math like the Jacobian and it's a bit over-engineered. But we can see these red parts, they're terrible and they're right in the middle of our range. Basically, we cannot control the robot in the red or orange parts. But by playing with the sliders, I can make the actual perfect robot. At first I tweaked the parameters by hand, but then I found an algorithm called differential evolution. It automatically finds the perfect robot parameters within my demands. I can just grab these parameters and put them in my cat editor and get the perfect robot layout. I then added a little viewfinder window and version 3 was born. And while testing this new version I noticed some hysteresis. If I go from 100 to 110 degrees, then back to 100, then to 90, and then back to 100, it doesn't return to the same position. Gravity pulls it down a bit and the control loop keeps a small error. But that's the price we pay for portability and cheap servos. However, when I drew a test picture, I found out something else. As it turns out, this new prototype doesn't work. It's just really noisy. This is a cat drawn with the previous system and this is with the new system. I just couldn't find what was wrong. So I went back to the previous robot in GOAT and just replaced things step by step. After a lot of trial and error, I found out that the weight of the pen holder was a big problem. So I designed a lighter version. The results improved on the old prototype and it also improved a lot on the new prototype. However, I wasn't convinced this was the final performance just yet. I think the working area of the new one is just too big for these servos. So I went back into CAD and... It's version 4! <laughs> Ta-da! I think we can work with this one. I added some code so you can drop files on the robot and it will draw them for you. And I tried to improve the last bits of performance. I learned you can go from this result to this one only by adjusting the height of the pen. So I added a simple calibration procedure that tests the pen height on four different spots. I also designed an adapter for the pen holder, but that didn't improve performance at all. What does matter, and it's a tremendous amount, is the tightness of the screws on the joints. I only found this out in the final stages of testing and I wish I'd found out sooner. My assumption had been that free running would be better than friction for these joints, but it turns out the friction actually helps the dynamics of the system a little. Wow. So with everything working really well, we're ready for the final version. For the color scheme, I was thinking about candy, and then I changed my mind and switched to a more classic look. After all these tries, the electronics fit perfectly in the back box and the power bank can just be strapped in with Velcro. Just two years ago, I'd never made anything in CAD and now I made this, so I'm really proud. At this point, you're still watching the video, so you must be a subscriber. And if you're not, go ahead and subscribe. You don't want to miss this content, right? After all this, I brought the camera to a party and let's take some pictures of people. Now, if you want to build this camera for yourself, I've put together two kits on my website. One contains all source code, 3D models, the assembly video, and a list of all parts that you will need to buy. The second kit contains all necessary parts, so you can build it straight away. I'd love to see what you guys can do with my source code and models. Now, let me ask you this. Has your cat been nagging you for a photo shoot? Yeah, mine neither. But here we are. You're gonna be famous. The camera loves you. Uh, I was too far away. Show me a sneeze. Oh. Show me hunger. Show me gluttony. That is cool. Don't move. 
perfectionist fragile. Ah, bad. You are ferocious. So this was my effort making art. But what if we involve an actual artist? Jacoba is a Dutch artist who creates illuminated embroidery and other sculptures. And she's been to art school, so I'd figure I'd throw her the camera and see what happens. She found the camera carrying case at a thrift shop and then experimented with brushes and layering. It was really nice to see an actual artist use my invention. Later I had someone working on my house and I found that people really like to get their picture taken by this camera. Even though the result isn't that flattering, but I mean, it's just something unique I guess. I had a lot of fun building this project and a lot of frustration, but mostly fun. Don't forget, if you want to build this for yourself, you can go to my website and order it. Thanks for watching and now get out of here!